<laughs> that is massive. All right. <laughs> There's our first inverter mount. Hey guys, look at this, huh? Double aluminium support on the back. M6 flange nuts, 6.6 .6 ton screws. I would say, I would say if this one comes down, it's definitely not my fault. Definitely not. And I have three screws up here where the weight is. And then we've got the normal distance down here. So I heard what you are saying, that M6 is enough to hold this inverter. We will see. It is not my fault. <laughs> And we will do exactly the same on the other side as well. So hopefully they will hang on the same height then. That's the goal. <laughs> Roughly in the middle of the panel and on the same height. That would be amazing. And the panel goes up. <laughs> Will this three millimeter aluminum panel hold my weight? Okay, slowly, slowly, slowly. Yeah, yeah. I'm hanging, I'm hanging. Yeah, I'm hanging. It holds, it holds. Yeah, that's how you check the carrying capacity of your inverter mount. No big deal. So here I'm just going to do a copy and paste. Yeah, well, that's how easy it is. Yeah, that's better. Guys, welcome back to another episode here from the off-night garage in sunny hot Australia. Yes, we are hanging. Isn't that a cool looking setup? I really like it. It wasn't actually too hard to hang the old inverter and even the multi-plus here on the wall just by myself. 30 kilos, a firm grip, some gloves, and it was on. So this will be the setup. We had some discussion on one of my other videos um, how we can connect these two together. So there is of course the opportunity to have this old inverter here as the input of the Multi Plus and then this one will add some power on top of this one to supply to our loads then. Um, but, but the problem is that the Multi Plus can only add up to three kilo VA to its input signal and this is exactly the output of this one here but of course we cannot we cannot utilize the full 3 kVA all the time we probably can set this one up to 2 kVA to deliver and this one would add an additional 3 kVA which would then end up like 5 kVA which is um, exactly the output of the multi plus so I guess the um, daisy chaining the uh, piggyback situation here doesn't quite make sense um, in these circumstances. So I probably will have them cabled separately to two different switchboards. Every inverter will have their own dedicated load. It is just a question which load will be connected to which inverter. And how often will I change this? <laughs> because something is not working and I haven't found the right combination. Um, what I quite found interesting here is look at the positive and negative terminal of the Multi Plus. See the positive on the left? It has a full metal shiny, oh, shiny bus bar, while the negative on the right is only like a printed PCB surface. So there's no actual bus bar. And I was wondering if this is actually normal. I couldn't find any other pictures 
um, of the MultiPlus terminals online because see my one has this gap here between the input and the two outputs and pictures you can find online have them all in one row and here's like a spacer in between now see there so I think this is an upgraded version here already but this one looks not right this is only like a PCB here as if the whole terminal is missing Maybe someone of you can comment who has got a MultiPlus at home and can have a look at the terminals and see... Well, there should be a bus bar. It is a 200 amp connection and I don't think this PCB can handle 200 amps here. And the current is clearly not going through the stud. So that looks a bit sus. Anyway, this is not the point of my video tonight. The point is... I don't know how to cable everything. So this will be this will be the duct coming down with all the DC cables going to our uh, solar isolator here and then further having also the 70 mil cables connected in here going to our inverters. 70 mil to here and well eventually a 70 mil to here as well to a second multi plus. So the problem is how do I run the cables from here from the DC side from our battery shelf over to the inverters because the battery terminals are on the right hand side and the AC output is on the left hand side but the DC cables are coming from this side here so I have to have a crossing with the AC cables at some point somewhere I will have the AC I will have the DC cables coming up all the way from down here to the terminals and have another isolating switch in between to turn off the positive terminal here from the DC side to turn off the inverter. So there will be a DC cable barrier basically here and we have to bring the AC cable just over here on this side because the um, well the distribution box will be sitting here on this side and there are our inverters. Yeah I'm not sure how to handle this crossing correctly um, there is a possibility to uh, punch a hole in here because we have got a hole punch now We can punch just a hole in the aluminium here fairly easy and jump behind the panel with the AC cable And then come down here again and have the AC cable running here in this tray Basically all the way across up there and then it goes into the switchboard So that could be a potential solution and in this case I would have no crossings at all the AC runs behind the panel and the DC runs on top of the panel. Could be a clean solution, right? But I would really like to avoid punching any holes in these aluminium sheets here. So I would like to have another duct here, cable duct similar to this one, where the AC cables run. But then I have to cross my DC at some stage, either down here or down here in the horizontal way. So I probably will have this cable duct going all the way down and then having another duct here at the bottom running and DC is coming from here isolator positive negative the duct goes further and same here goes up positive negative isolator and the duct goes further going up here isolator positive negative to this one but then here again AC output is on the left DC input on the right. So we have to have a crossing here as well. So this is my first world problem at the moment. I think it is okay if we cross the cables at some stage. So having the conduits coming in a 90 degree angle and then have the AC cable basically going inside the DC cable just on a 90 degree angle. So it's not, run it's not running in the same duct, it's just crossing it. And because we are using, yeah, we will, we will use this um, six millimeter cable here for our AC output from the MultiPlus to the switchboard. And this is double insulated cable. And the battery cables are double insulated as well. Yeah, I cannot see any other possibility than these two. Either have a crossing at each inverter or punching a hole in there and going behind the panel and down and in the tray this way. Also on the negative side of things, the 70 mil cable for the inverters has still not arrived. They have sent it the day before yesterday 
and it is still not there. From Brisbane to here, there's like 50 kilometers and it has still not arrived. So I hope it comes on Monday. With all this shit happening in the world right now, I've got no faith in Australia Post anymore. <laughs> it may not even come with Australia Post. I don't know. And I thought about the idea to have later on all three inverters up here on these panels and have our AC distribution down here somewhere. The problem with that is that we have this horizontal beam here. It, it acts basically like a barrier and it is very hard to overcome. We have to either jump over it or I can only pull single cables or we can only use these well corrugated outside wall here, these gaps to feed the cable through and this is not ideal either. So at the moment I don't want to use this space down here at all but well with this setup we will have enough power anyway to power everything we need at the moment until uh, well the contract end in 2028 and then we have to redesign at least this side here again and then we will have our final final design and final installation right <laughs> the final final installation but at the moment i just want to make a decision about the cabling yeah leave your comments down below what you think should we punch a hole in there and go with the ac cables behind the sheet and down here in the tray or should we have a crossing cable duct crossing 90 degree crossing no parallel cables in one duct just a 90 degree crossing and and have all the installations in separate cable ducts so ac is separate to dc but with two crossings yeah as always guys i i'm really grateful for your input in on this to help me making a decision <laughs> i'm not good in making decisions really <laughs> i really struggle with that <laughs> Oh yeah, on a side note here, I've got the um, I've got the acrylic barrier here, which uh, separates our 48 volt area here and our 12 and 5 volt area on this side here. So this is the barrier here. And we also have the covers for our main bus bars here. And I actually picked a solution from Ross. And he said, don't do any banded acrylic here going over the bus bars and make cutouts for all the cables. It will be a pain in the ass. And he's totally right. So he said, well, just standoffs and a flat sheet of acrylic. Here are our standoffs. We need to tap them with M5, M6. And then we will have these covers while well, this one is not. And then we will have these covers here on top of the bus bars, of course, as fully transparent clear glass acrylic sheets to cover our bus bars if we open if we open the top here of the shelf and drop something inside nothing can touch the bus bars we have to undo these four screws then which holding down the um, the cover to actually access it so this is good this was a very good and easy solution i like this very much but guys come on let's focus on this problem here don't get sidetracked with all this Acrylic shit. Yeah, I don't I don't really know. I'm really torn between punching a hole in there and having the AC cables running behind the aluminium panel or doing a crossing. It is both not ideal, but I cannot see any other possibility to get this done. Option C to go actually around there and all the way up and then across there and coming down there again into the switchboard area. And you can do the same over there, same duct up there. It's another possibility, you know? So we've got ABC now. And all these different options doesn't make it easier. I need help, guys. I'm totally burned out with all this stuff here. It's probably the total lack of sleep. <laughs> okay, guys, so far this video from today, I just wanted to show you they are hanging i'm hanging so one step further in the installation of our power wall and until the next video potentially tomorrow <laughs> thanks for watching guys thanks for all your support here on the channel you stay charged and safe and um yeah thank you again for watching see you then bye bye a b See. Can't be that hard.